Well, Ethan, back tonight for not a beer review, but an album review. And I'm going to be reviewing Molly Hatchet. This is their self-titled debut album. came out in 1978. Their first record. It's got the iconic cover art. The, the next album has an even more iconic cover art, Flirting with Disaster. But this one I like as well. You got the Grim Reaper looking medieval fantasy dude on the horse with the hatchet. Really cool. And I got this, as you can see, it's backwards in the camera, but I got it for $6.95 at a used record and antique mall or shop. Um, I forgot exactly where I got it. S over six months ago. It was a while ago. Back in, I think it was back in February, maybe. But anyway, uh, Molly Hatchet is a band, a southern rock band formed out of Jacksonville, Florida. They actually rose up out of the ashes of Leonard Skinner, a more famous southern rock act. Uh, again, the tragic plane crash of Skinner in 77. These guys were still around at the time of Skinner when Skinner was, was um, releasing their classic albums, but they didn't get signed with this this classic album debut until after the plane crash and then a lot of southern rock bands kind of came up out of their ashes uh sort of almost is like a tribute to the fallen heroes their fallen heroes skinner you know uh you got molly hatchet you got blackfoot with ricky medlock you got the outlaws you got 38 special which is the singer who died from skinner his brother was the singer of 38 special donnie van zant and then his their little brother johnny now fronts skinner um, so it's interesting how the Southern rock, uh, genre, they're all kind of, um, connected in a way, especially from the Jacksonville, uh, you know, Macon, South Georgia, Alabama, kind of, you know, all starting kind of from the Almond brothers. They all kind of were intertwined in a way. I guess you could say the same for British rock in the sixties, Beatles, Stones, you know, uh, the who, Zeppelin, you know, they all kind of boomed around the same time and similar with Southern Rock, although across the pond and in the South, basically. Uh, but yeah, this is Molly Hatchet's debut record, uh, released September 1st, 1978, recorded at the Sound Pit in Atlanta, Georgia, which Leonard Skinner also released some of their albums or recorded some of their albums in Atlanta. I don't know. I think the sound pit might be defunct now. I don't know if it's still in operation. Uh, the label is Epic Records, produced by Tom Worman. There's a good shot of the guys back here. You know, kind of big, butch-looking, southern kind of redneck dudes. <laughs> The singer shirt, Danny Joe Brown, he has a shirt that actually says Redneck Power. <laughs> so ridiculous, but hey, you gotta love it. So the band consisted of Danny Joe Brown on lead vocals, Dwayne Rolland on lead guitar, Dave Hlubeck on lead guitar, and Steve Holland on lead guitar. So this was a three-guitar band, very similar to uh, the latter period of Skinner in the 77 with uh, Street Survivors, they had the three guitarists. This band also had the three guitarists. So you have a nice guitar sound with these albums. Lots of, you know, just swirling guitar solos and riffs. So that three guitar attack really just makes these um, this album and this band just excellent it just sounds so good you got uh banner thomas on bass guitar and bruce crump on drums the name of the band molly hatchet actually comes from a a 17th century prostitute who allegedly uh would uh, behead her, her her lovers after uh uh would behead her her lovers and kill him, you know, after doing the, you know, work that she was paid to do, so to speak. So that thought that was pretty crazy. It says on the back here, where in 17th century Salem, where one legendary lady, if one could call her that, named Molly Hatchet, would behead her lovers with that hand tool Lizzie Borden made famous. 
Why they chose that, I don't know. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of weird. But there you go. That's Molly Hatchet for you. Um, so this album and the next one, the next one's even more popular, I would say. It features the hit song, um, Flirting with Disaster, radio hit for the band. And they didn't have a lot, but I, I think I might like this one a little more than the second than the next one, if not just as much. I think it's it's just excellent. Very much a Skinnerd clone and very much influenced by Leonard Skinnerd. But hey, for somebody like me who who loves Leonard Skinnerd so much, a Skinnerd clone, that doesn't bother me at all. Like a lot of bands copied Black Sabbath, metal bands, but hey, we still love them. You know, Metallica influenced by Black Sabbath. Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, all influenced by Sabbath. These guys are a direct kind of clone to Leonard Skinner, but they, you know, they admit it at least. Um, they even reference Skinner and the South and the Southern Rock in general in a lot of their songs. So let's get into their song. Side one is a song called Bounty Hunter. Kicks off the album. Great song. Has a nice hook, nice chorus. It's just a real catchy song. The next song, heavily influenced by Skinner, Gator Country, talking about Florida, the swamp, kind of the, you know, where gators are native. Um, reminds me a lot of the Leonard Skinner song, Swamp Music. <clears throat> Very similar kind of theme. Uh, the next song is called Big Apple, about New York City. Reminds me again a lot of a Leonard Skinner song called... Um, uh, I'm a country boy from Nothing Fancy, the Nothing Fancy album. And then the next song, great song, is called The Creeper. Love it. Great chorus, catchy as heck. Great guitar solos in that. And I forgot to mention, Gator Country, swirling guitar solos in that song. Excellent guitar tone. you got slide guitar all through these songs. Sounds great. Crisp, tight solos and riffs. Just some great guitar work from these guys. And, and great vocals from Danny Joe Brown. He had a real gruff kind of uh, sort of a whiskey-soaked vocal style. Really good. Just really good. Uh, might not appeal to some people, but I really like his, his singing style. And then the next song after Creeper is called The Price You Pay. Again, just a catchy rock song. Very, very southern rock, but again, straightforward hard rock as well. These guys sounded a lot like Skinner, but maybe even a little heavier. And then uh, the band Blackfoot, to me, they were even heavier than these guys. So, similar in, like, the metal genre, <clears throat> these guys just, they took what they're in, they were influenced by and then just took it a step further, right? So, that's what they did here from Skinner. Side 2 is a song called Dreams I'll Never See, which was released as a single. Uh, I do believe, yep, released as a single. And it's a somewhat of a cover of the Almond Brothers song, dreams so they just put dreams i'll never see instead of dreams so that it wouldn't have to you know be a direct cover but good song long song probably not my favorite on the album i'd prefer if they had done a more straightforward kind of boogie rock southern rock song the next song is a song called i'll be running again sounds like a broken record eh, record um catchy great chorus great guitar great vocals just, a, just a, um, a, a raucous good time, a lot of these songs. The next song is called Cheatin' Woman. Again, Skinner has a song with the exact same title off of the Nothing Fancy album, which I have. Um, great song, Cheatin' Woman. Uh, just swirling guitar solos. You got a gruff, kind of mournful vocal from Danny Joe Brown. Great song. Uh, the last song is called Trust Your Old Friend. Again, reminds me a lot of Skinner, you know, about trust, who to trust, who not to trust. That sort of, Skinner had a lot of stuff like that about somebody doing you wrong, etc. Who you thought had your back, that kind of thing. <clears throat> Seems to be kind of a, a theme that runs throughout Southern Rock for whatever reason. But just a great album. And look at that album cover. I mean, I, I would get this just for the album cover alone. Um, just, just iconic. Um, it was, they are fantasy, sort of like Conan the Barbarian-esque style paintings from a guy named Frank Frazara, I believe. He did the artwork on this and the, the, the next couple of albums. But, uh, yeah, Molly Hatchet's debut, just called Molly Hatchet, self-titled. Great album. Just every song is good. If there was a song that... 
I think was not as strong as the rest. I would probably have to say uh, the last song, Trust Your Old Friend, not as strong and catchy as the others, but really when only one out of nine songs is not very good and you have eight really good rocking songs, can't complain. I just love this album. I love that shot of the guys there. Again, this band had been around throughout the early 70s, um, but they just didn't really get signed to a major label until 78 with this one. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can find anything else on on the album. Yeah, recorded in Atlanta, which I thought was cool. Cover painting. It's by a guy named Frank Frazetta. The painting is titled The Death Dealer. I guess that's just so, sort of supposed to go with the song Bounty Hunter. He's like a, you know, he's dealing in death. He's like, maybe he's hired to like do people in or whatever. So pretty cool. Um, anyway, great album cover. Great album. If you haven't heard of these guys, I recommend them. A lot of you probably have. Um, I'd heard of them like very much, but just recently have gotten into them a lot. Bought this one and Flirting with Disaster. And Beating the Odds, their third album with the next singer, J Jimmy Farrar, When Danny Joe Brown Left. That's a great album. Really good. I might have to buy that one. Yeah, Beating the Odds, I love that one. I've been listening to that at the gym and whatnot. Um, really good album. Their first four, I would say. They say their first five are really good. Uh, no Guts, No Glory is really good. Probably get that too. Take No Prisoners, eh, not, not as good, but I still like it. Still worth having. But yeah, these first two Molly Hatchet albums, probably the cream of the crop. Um, yeah, if you like Ted Nugent, Leonard Skinner, Almond Brothers, Blackfoot, 38 Special, or if you like Molly Hatchet, I mean, just, yeah, love this album. I'll give it uh, four out of five stars. I'll give it an 85 out of 100. Great album. Not a perfect album. Again, this is not just, this is not like, you know, wonderfully complex and, and amazing music. This is just straightforward, hard rocking, almost barroom songs, if you will, barroom rock. But it's great. I think it's really good. has a great sound to it. Um, yeah, check out Molly Hatchet. Gets four out of five stars for me, 85 out of 100. Thank you for watching this album review.